The brain is the most complex organ in your body. It's your command center, exerting control over autonomic functions like breathing, the beating of your heart, muscle activity, and hormone release, while also giving you the ability to think and see and hear and interpret the world around you in a way that is completely unique to everyone else. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the anatomical structures that make up the brain, as well as their main functions. And for this, I will be using Human Anatomy Atlas, so if you have the app, feel free to follow along with me. I'm going to start with a preset view that I made earlier, which I'm going to grab out of my favorites. As you can see, we've got the skull and the spinal column here, which respectively encase the central nervous system, also known as the CNS. And using the systems tray, I'm going to hide all of the skeletal structures on the screen, so we're just left with the CNS. No, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. The brain and spinal cord are encased in something, and what that something is, is dura mater, which is a thick sheath of connective tissue that protects the brain and spinal cord. Dura mater makes up the outermost layer of the meninges. And you may be thinking, hey, that kind of sounds like meningitis, and you are right. Meningitis is when the meninges become inflamed. Anyway, I am going to hide the dura mater to get a better look at the CNS. And you can see our lovely brain and spinal cord models here. The spinal cord is a thick, long bundle of nerves that has some really important functions. Think of the brain as central command and the spinal cord as a super highway that sends the brain's commands and relays the body's messages back to the brain via the peripheral nervous system, which is made up of all of the nerves and ganglia outside of the CNS. Uh, it's also referred to as the PNS. And using the search tool, I am going to add it to the model so you can get a better look at it. The CNS and PNS work together to control the body's motor, autonomic, and sensory functions. Okay, I'm going to hide the PNS and the spinal cord, and we are going to move our way up. I'm going to rotate the model so we can see things from an inferior view. And here you can see the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the cerebellum. These structures make up the rhombencephalon, or the hindbrain, and are responsible for controlling autonomic functions like breathing, the beating of the heart, and digestion, as well as fine-tuning body movements in terms of balance and posture. And now on to the main event, which is pretty much what comes to mind whenever someone thinks of a brain, the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and is categorized into functional areas called lobes. It's divided by the longitudinal fissure into two hemispheres, the right and left, and is connected by the corpus callosum, which you can kind of see in the fissure here. The four lobes of the brain are the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital, and both hemispheres of the brain have these lobes. They're named after the bones that cover them. The frontal lobe is where higher functions occur, like planning, problem solving, long-term memory, impulse control, and speech and language. The parietal lobe integrates sensory information and plays a role in spatial perception. The temporal lobe contains an auditory cortex that receives input from the cochlear nerve and is responsible for primary auditory perception. It's also associated with processing sensory input into derived meanings, uh, like attaching emotions to visuals, like when you recognize a face. The occipital lobe is the visual processing center of the brain and home to the visual cortex. And while it may be the smallest of the four lobes, it has a lot of jobs. Visual spatial processing, object and face recognition, distance and depth perception, memory formation, and determining color, to name just a few. The cerebrum isn't just these four lobes. There are structures called gyri and sulci as well. A gyrus is a ridge or a fold between two clefts that increases surface area. Here is the precentral gyrus and the postcentral gyrus, both between the frontal and parietal lobes. The precentral gyrus contains the primary motor cortex and controls precise movements of skeletal muscles, while the postcentral gyrus contains the primary somatosensory cortex and is responsible for spatial discrimination. Now, these are just two. There are gyri all over the brain. The cingulate gyrus, in particular, is one of my favorites, but it's part of the limbic system, which is another topic for another video. 
The sulci are fissures and separate the gyri. The more prominent ones separate the lobes. The central sulcus, or the fissure of Rolando, which in my opinion is the coolest name ever, separates the frontal and parietal lobes. The slightly less cool named lateral sulcus, but still just as important, separates the parietal and frontal lobes from the temporal lobe. The parieto-occipital sulcus separates, you guessed it, the parietal and occipital lobes. And there we are, the cerebrum and some of the other structures of the outer brain. Stay tuned for the next video where we take a look at the structures of the inner brain, including a group that is my absolute favorite, the limbic system. Thanks so much for joining me for this look at the brain today. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss another anatomy walkthrough. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter because we are always posting cool stuff. See you next time.